Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. As a church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God have mercy. As a church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy, God have mercy. As the church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatment within the call process, inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial segregation, divestment from black communities and congregations, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions. Actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another also. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in every age you have sent men and women who've given their lives in witness to your love and the truth. Inspire us with the memory of Clementa, Cynthia, Daniel, Depayne, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Taiwanza, the Emmanuel Nine, whose faithfulness led to the way of the cross. And give us courage to bear full witness with our lives to your son's victory over sin and death. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Revelation. When the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer till the number would be complete, both of their fellow servants and of their brothers and sisters who were soon to be killed as they themselves had been killed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, 
If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, we read that Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now, whenever I travel, I have this ongoing conversation with God, a prayerful conversation for guidance and protection, but also for thanksgiving and return. When I left Tanzania, I prayed, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful country and for these faithful people. When I left Haiti not long after the earthquake, I prayed, Bring me back. When I left hot and humid Houston after the last youth gathering, I prayed, Lord, if you send me, I'll go. But if I never go back to Houston, I'd be okay with that. When I left Charleston, South Carolina, after attending my first Bishop's Academy, I said to God, I don't ever want to go back to that city. I find one of the best ways to get to know a city is to run that city streets. On my second day in Charleston, I ran through the city, down along the waterfront, with these beautiful southern homes, through the monuments of White Point Park, and then up into the old downtown. I stopped at the old slave market where thousands of African men, women, and children were sold into slavery. And then I began to wonder who it was that built these beautiful southern homes. And when did those monuments go up at White Point Park? And then I turned left on Broad Street but couldn't get through. The block around the federal courthouse was shut down. Police cars, barricades, and federal officers with semi-automatic weapons. You see, the bishops were in Charleston during the same week that Dylan Roof was being sentenced for murdering the Emmanuel Nine. That evening, we went to Mother Emanuel Church, where we were kindly and graciously and lovingly welcomed by the saints of God. We sat there in the sanctuary in silence beneath the beautiful stained glass. Pastor Manning arrived and apologized for being late. He had spent the day in federal court offering prayer and support. He then offered a prayer for us. As we were filing out of Mother Emanuel, I noticed up on the wall by one of the doors an AED cabinet, but no AED unit. I thought to myself, an empty AED cabinet isn't going to help anybody. And then I thought, oh God, have you ever experienced the conviction of truth in such a way that it grips hold of your soul and will not let go? Because I knew as if God Almighty told me that on the night of the shooting, 
that someone had rushed downstairs and then rushed upstairs to get the AED and then back downstairs to try to save someone's life. So there was a cabinet, but there was no unit. When I left Charleston, South Carolina, after attending my first Bishop's Academy, I said to God, I don't ever want to go back to that city. That's the truth. But even in that statement, there is another truth a more horrible truth, the truth of power and the truth of privilege. You see, my privilege as a 52-year-old white male provides me the power and the freedom to walk away, to walk away from white supremacy, to walk away from systemic racism, to walk away from Charleston, South Carolina, fully knowing that Charleston is really no different than the Pontiac that I grew up in, or Detroit, or Toledo, or Findlay, or even my little village of Lucky, Ohio. It's really no different. I think we just work a bit harder to hide it. So there is always the power and the freedom to walk away. But every time I walk away, every time we walk away, somebody else is forced to bear the burden. Jesus once said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For as we follow Jesus, the freedom to walk away gives way to the truth, that when we walk with Jesus, there is no walking away. Because when we walk with Jesus, we walk with all of God's children. We walk with Clementa and Cynthia, with Daniel and Depain, with Ethel and Myra, with Sharonda, Susie, and Twanza. When we walk with Jesus, we walk with all of God's children toward the beloved community and into the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The Emmanuel Nine of blessed and eternal memory were nine gifted, loving, and faithful people who spent their lives striving for excellence, connection, and the presence of God, and spent their last moments in study of the Word. They leave a legacy of grace, resistance, family, and faith. Gracious God, in remembering their lives and witness, we are called to a wider understanding of the Spirit's work in the world. They were preachers. Open us to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. They were students. Kindle in us a desire to learn and grow in your ways. They were teachers. Instill in us a passion to share the wisdom of Christ. They were coaches. Accompany us as we strive to run the race set before us. They were mentors. Inspire us through the wise counsel offered by others. They were leaders. Embolden us to seek out the best in others. They were musicians. Attune us to the sounds of your creation. They were poets. Reveal your truth in language we have yet to discover. They were barbers. Shape us as attentive caregivers to those around us. They were custodians. Protect those whose work ensures our safety. 
They were bus drivers. Carry us as companions in life's unexpected journeys. They were veterans. Remember those who risk harm for the sake of others. They were librarians. Write on our hearts and minds the wisdom of the generations. They were advocates. Call us to speak and act on behalf of those who are silenced. They were public servants. Show us how to love our neighbors as ourselves. They were legislators. Inscribe your laws of love and justice on our hearts. In lives of faithful dedication, your servants, Clemente, Cynthia, Daniel, Depain, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Tawanza. Lived by your promises, sharing their gifts with those in their families and communities. May we never forget their lives taken too soon. In the years to come, let us share their names and their witness so that the world comes to know of your spirit at work in and through them. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God, our truth, through the ages you have spoken through prophets, stir up in your church a passion for the world revealed in Jesus, that following the witness of the Emmanuel Nine, your church studies the scriptures, shows partiality, prays without ceasing, and embodies prophetic justice in community. Embolden church leaders and all the baptized to remember the lives of the Nine, repent of racism, and white supremacy, and renew our commitment to your word revealed most fully in Jesus, our way, truth, and life. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God, our truth, through the ages you have spoken through prophets, stir up in your church a passion for your word revealed in Jesus, that following the witness of the Emmanuel Nine, your church studies the scriptures, shows hospitality, prays without ceasing, and embodies prophetic justice in community embolden church leaders and all the baptized to remember the lives of the nine, repent of racism and white supremacy, and renew our commitment to your word revealed most fully in Jesus, our way, truth, and life. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Mighty and loving God, we pray for our nation and the plague of racism that threatens destroys and kills. Root out white supremacy wherever it takes hold. Release its grip on those lured by its false promises. Bring to repentance all who continue to benefit from prejudice and hatred, both hidden and revealed. Plant in our hearts and nation a willing spirit, open to truth-telling and healing. In your great mercy, Receive our prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, you embrace and love those who cry out to you. Lift up all whom hatred has cast down, embolden those who need courage to speak and act against oppression, 
sustain those who are weary from efforts that bring no end to injustice. Comfort parents weeping for children, children who have been separated from parents and families in crises of any kind. Restore hope where it has been lost so that all may trust your love that reaches to the depths of pain and suffering. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Deliver us, O God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray. Grant us wisdom, give us courage for the facing of these days, by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Christ Jesus. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. We give you thanks, holy God, for the faithful life and witness of Clementa, Cynthia, Daniel, Depain, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Taiwanza, the Emmanuel Nine. May their faith and witness to your forgiving love in Jesus Christ inspire all people to pursue paths of justice, courage, and self-giving love. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in the hope and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. And now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.